details of uh, the entire operation. First, first listen in to what the DIG intelligence had to say. Let me also quickly go across to my colleague uh, Akil, who's uh, joining us right now from Bastar, getting us uh, that operation, getting us details of the operation, and also speaking to the BSF officials. Uh, Akil, you've reached out to the BSF as well as Chhattisgarh Police. Uh, you've heard what the Deputy Chief Minister also had to say a short while back. What more do you have to say? Because uh, when you were trying to reach uh, the very place, they still say that it is quite sensitive. The area has been completely cordoned off. And the very fact that they still suspect that there could be a few more Maoists who are yet to be neutralized. Well, absolutely, Shavar. We try to reach out to the exact location where that encounter took place. We, we spoke to the officials in the DSF department. We spoke to the officials in the Chhattisgarh Police Department as well. And they said that uh, right now the area has been cordoned off and there are some security concerns. That why, that's why they won't allow us to go over there because uh, that's a very highly Blame. sensitive zone. But right now, if you'll see the latest update in this case is that uh, right now I'm just standing outside the hospital where uh, outside the mortuary center of the hospital where uh, one by one all the 29 bodies are being taken out and now the, all those bodies of those lights will be handed over to their loved ones. Shavan. Let me just quickly also take uh, one more question with you, Akil, while we'll play out uh, the, some more details that Simran has just got us, uh, details of the operation that was uh, carried out. We'll try and see if we can uh, go across to her also. Akil, just uh, a quick check with you with regards uh, to how was the operation really carried out? For many to understand this, that it is not something that has happened just about 20, within 24 hours. A lot has gone into the preparation for this entire operation. What more details are you picking up? Well, absolutely. We spoke to the IG uh, of the Pastor range and he said that as Lok Sabha is round the corner and this area, this Pastor range area is very close to the Narayanpur district and Narayanpur district is a very you, sensitive zone. Jo, where jo the, isne tic -tac where the IG or Can you at least play so that out? Will, where is the bite? see this the entire area, uh, in this area, the IG has been receiving intelligence inputs that for the last one month they have been trying to create some kind of nuisance and in that space and uh, according to the ID they were planning to uh, uh, to start a big gathering in that Naxal area but uh, the IG team uh, have created five different teams to uh, to uh, to understand the nuance of each situation and then after that with a joint operation with the help of the Chhattisgarh police and the BSF they, uh, uh, they in a joint effort they started that operation yesterday afternoon after getting a consolidated uh, uh, option on, on that front and then they started that operation on that front yes Shavan. Uh, Sibran, who's getting us more details while we'll play out uh, the first reaction now coming in from the injured soldiers of uh, the border security force. In fact, uh, Sibran has also reached out uh, to the injured uh, BSF soldiers uh, who've spoken exclusively uh, to Republic TV. We'll, we'll play that out in a short while from now. But first to you, Sibran, you've spoken to the BSF headquarters here in the national capital. You've got more details of uh, the operation. Quickly take our viewers uh, through the details of the operation. How was it carried out? Well, firstly, let me clarify about the uh, statements that have been ex exclusively accessed from the BSF Jawans who have been injured in this operation and coming out and speaking to Republic TV over how they themselves saw that uh, what we have also broken that the uh, commission, the commander of the entire Naxal or an um, entire Maoist group was actually having a rest time when the group of the BSF and the paramilitary force had attacked them. This is as per the sources which we are also going and the BSF commander has also confirmed the details that while the operation was going on, it was on the tip of that the entire head of uh, the uh, Maoist uh, operative group was having uh, the time to rest into that uh, forest area where the 
uh, uh, paramilitary forces in huge numbers actually overpowered them. And that is when the onset of the critical operation, which was going on uh, for, for a long time, the planning and the tip off uh, of which was going on for a long time actually broke out. It is very important to note that this was the very sensitive time when even the Jawans were guarding that entire Kanker Buster area and were also on the duty for maintaining and ensuring that no uh, no activity actually uh, comes out and happens beyond that point of time while the operation was going on. We have also exclusively spoken to one of the soldiers who was mentioning that while he got injured, more the uh, more of the Maoist operatives who were resting actually got uh, uh, active and they started attacking. So there we have more details of the operations that uh, that everybody is now also saying is one of the biggest in the history of Chhattisgarh till date. But very important to look that the Jawans uh, overpowered and also took out the encounter specifically at that sensitive time when it was very important to note that uh, the Maoist commander was taking some rest time after the lunch. And this is especially before the time when they were going to plan and execute a meeting uh, in the afternoon, which actually led to one of the most successful uh, anti-Naxal operations in the sensitive area of Kanker, which will also be going to polls on 26th. Back to you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Simran, for getting us that comprehensive report and also reaching out uh, to the injured soldiers. Uh, we'll play out uh, their first reaction now coming in uh, from the hospital where they have been admitted, but first listen in to what the IG had to tell my colleague Akil, and then we'll play out the reactions coming in from the injured soldiers. Right now, I'm joined by Buster IG P. Sundarlal. So, what has happened? Could you please tell us the entire timeline, how it has started? On 16th of April, we had a specific input about presence of banned and uh, illegal moist outfit in Chota Betia uh, police, police station jurisdiction area. So there was a joint operation launched by DRG Kanker and BSF. During the search operation, around 14 hours, there was an exchange of fire. And the exchange of fire continued for almost four to five hours. At the end of the uh, exchange of fire, we searched the area. We recovered more than 29 moist dead bodies. Out of the 29, 15 are female moist carriers, and uh, most of them are uniform carriers. And from the spot, we recovered AK-47, SLR, INSAS, 303 carbine, 9M pistol, uh, over 9 dual graded weapons, which were might have been looted from the security forces at various point of time. Yeah. How long that operation continued, sir? Exchange of fire took place for more than four to five hours. And still now, like uh, uh, other reinforcement parties also, they are searching the area. It is a continuous process. Right now also, we have a lot of teams uh, uh, who are coordinating and searching that uh, site of encounter so that for any chance of like moist uh, injured cadres, we will be able to apprehend them also. The operation is going on right now. How many Jawans and officers got injured in that entire operation? During yesterday's operation, uh, one BSF inspector, Mr. Chaudhary, and another DRG uh, Jawan, uh, Shuri Kant, Sri Mali, they sustained bullet injuries and they have been evacuated to the highest center in Raipur. And right now their condition is out of danger and they are recording very well. And a couple of other uh, Jawans, they have sustained minor injuries. They have been treated in their respective camps. And uh, all those injured uh, just officers and men, they are out of danger and they are recording wax very soon. How many next slides got killed in the entire incident? Uh, till now we record 29 moist dead body and in the last 3-4 months like uh, uh, since the beginning of 2024 we have required more than 71 moist dead bodies in Bastar range. Uh, my range comprises of all 7 districts starting from Sukma, Bijapur. तो वहाँ दिखाई पड़े नक्सली होटल संगीया है चारों तरफ से उसको नक्सली भी घेरना शुरू किया घेरते घेरते हमें टाइम बज गया बारह सवा बारह एक बज गया था और डेढ़ बजे नक्सली के साथ डेढ़ बजे के बीच में पहला मुख्य बिल्डर ही हुआ शुरू हुआ हमारा बिल्डर और ये जो जगह थी वो थी कलपर और यहाँ वहाँ पर नक्सलियों आकर के पहले से पता चल गया था सर उसके हिसाब से कार्डर करते हुए हम लोग डीआरजी कल मुख्य थे उसी दरमियान आया हुआ 
डेढ़ बजे आपको कहाँ गोली लगी जान पे लगा है दाहिने साइड में लेफ्ट सड़क निकल गया In just a decade, India has transformed into a digital powerhouse. From classrooms to clinics, farms to finance, digitalization is revolutionizing every aspect of life. To celebrate the makers and shakers behind Digital India and India's phenomenal digital yatra, Republic Business is delighted to bring its inaugural Republic Business Emerging Tech Award. With the 2024 Lok Sabha election phase one just around the corner, political parties have resorted to a new model of campaigning. With battle lines drawn, leaders in Karnataka seem to be one-upping each other in making controversial statements. Watch how ex-BJP MLA Sanjay Patil hurls derogatory remarks at Karnataka Women and Child Development Minister Lakshmi Hebalkar. Patil charged that the Congress would undergo restless nights looking at the surge of supporters for the BJP in the state. And so Hebalkar must take pills or quote unquote an extra peg to sleep. I have been in the last year. I have been in the last year. I have been in the last year. But I have been in the last year. 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 अन्य है कहाँ सांगा लग रहे राज रात्रि आम चाह का झुकू नहीं मनु मलास मरते मनु तीजा परंतु बात में पोचा भी अक्का भाई आज रात्रि जरा से गोली घे अन्य मग झोप कारण रमेश जार के लिए साय बेगाव ग्रामीण मध्य आज कार्यक्रम वाला हजर रहूँ तुझे कहीं खरा नहीं मनु मेशल देना चाह प्रयत्न करा लग लेते Retorting to the former BJP MLA's sexist comments, Lakshmi Hebalkar said that this shows the kind of respect BJP has for women. Sanjay Patil, we have a lot of people in our country, we have a lot of people in our country, we have a lot of people in our country, we have a lot of people in our country. That's the question. This is not 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 the question. This is the question. इवत्तो नन्ना लिंगायत समाज के मार्ग दंता वंदु अवा मर्यादे इस संजय पाटिल रूम तो बीजेपी ओर वंता हेले इडी महिला कोला ची तू वंता है Good evening and welcome friends uh, to this edition of Versus uh, where we bring you a debate and two sides of the debate. In a straight contest, uh, today we are discussing the encounter that has taken place in Chhattisgarh, in the Bastar area of Chhattisgarh, to be more specifically in Abujmad area, where 29 Naxals have been eliminated. This is the second biggest uh, targeting of uh, Maoists in that region by security forces, and it was an intelligence based operation coordinated by the Ministry of Home Affairs. Uh, and we have seen that this comes on the back of a sustained campaign going out uh, in the area to flush out uh, these uh, anti-social, anti-national elements. Uh, is there a strategy to it? Uh, why is it happening since the BJP government has come to power in October in Chhattisgarh? That's what we are going to have a conversation on in this uh, edition of Versus. Let me get you the headlines first. All right. Uh, in fact, uh, we Union Home Minister Amit Shah on Tuesday congratulated security forces for the successful operation against the Maoists in Chhattisgarh and said that the Modi government is determined to free the country from the scourge. The bigger question is, has BJP coming to power in Chhattisgarh made all the difference? Uh, take a look at this report, then I come back.
with the panel of guests. In one of India's biggest anti-Maoist operation, security forces conducted a successful encounter in the Kanker district, resulting in the neutralization of 29 Maoists. The operation, a collaborative effort by state police and paramilitary forces, aimed to dismantle Maoist networks operating in the region. The operation was planned and since it's uh, into the jungles, uh, the terrain is tough and we have to take all precautions. The, then uh, it was, we tied it up with the DRG, we practiced and uh, then we carried out this operation. Were there any specific intelligence input prior to carry out this operation? Uh, we've been receiving constant inputs about the movement of Naxals in the area and we've been following them and wherever we have a concrete information which is corroborated by various agencies, we try to act on them and this was one of the cases. This successful encounter marks a significant blow to Naxalite activities and reaffirms the commitment of security forces to maintain peace and security in the affected areas. Home Minister Amit Shah heralds a significant triumph of the BJP rule. Shah Road, he said, over 80 Maoists have been neutralized and 125 apprehended in a span of just three months. कल छत्तीसगढ़ में सुरक्षा बलों को बड़ी सफलता प्राप्त हुई है। मोदी जी जब से प्रधानमंत्री बने तब से नक्सलवाद और आतंकवाद के खिलाफ एक सातत्यपूर्ण अभियान भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार ने चलाया है लगभग तीन महीने के समय में 80 से ज्यादा नक्सली ढेर हुए हैं 125 से ज्यादा अरेस्ट किए गए हैं और 150 से ज्यादा नक्सलियों ने सरेंडर किया है This declaration highlights the BJP's coordinated efforts which signify a shift in the region's security landscape while BJP claims significant changes in the security landscape under its rule. The Congress doubted the forces. Former Chhattisgarh CM Baghel called the Khan Kher encounter fake. The debate we all have tonight is over encounter versus politics. Is the Congress right in touting our forces? Bureau Report, Republic TV. All right, for those who believe that uh, Naxalism is a menace that needs to be taken out, uh, this is a welcome development. See the kind of ammunition war stores uh, that these Naxals had, including AK-47 rifles, seven of them. And that gives you an idea of uh, the kind of uh, capability they have of inflicting damage on the society. Uh, but uh, Congress party seems to be a little unhappy. We had their spokesperson, Supriya Srinath, when asked the question on the encounter, asking for an inquiry into the encounter, going on to, in fact, call these Naxals Shaheeds, martyrs. I mean, if that is the position of the Congress party, that really explains why. When the Congress was in power in the state, we had a situation where we won't get those kind of reports where Naxals have been taken down, which we have been getting much more frequently of late, which means, obviously, the change of political dispensation in the state has made a difference. And that's what uh, we are having a conversation on. Is Congress doubting our forces by seeking an inquiry? And whether the Congress was a little lax in dealing with the issue of left-wing extremism. Uh, let's uh, introduce our uh, guests, one versus the other, and that's why it's called versus. We have uh, Shaina NC on one side, and we have uh, Gyanendra Mishra, who leans towards the left on the other side. Let's see if we can connect them now. Okay, there seems to be some uh, connectivity issue. In, if we can try and connect them on phone if, uh, if, if, if uh, there, is a, there is an issue with the video of the two guests, Gyanendra Mishra, and uh, Shaina NC, she's going to give us the view of the BJP. 
or we can connect uh, Okay, till the time we fix the issue of, uh, of, of uh, the guests getting us on their links, let's look at a ground report and try to understand the scale of uh, the achievement of the security forces in a well-coordinated move between the central agencies and uh, the BSF, CRPF uh, and the state uh, police force on the ground. And uh, look at these pictures. I also look at a ground report filed by Akil, who's there in Basta for us. Right now, I'm standing at Kakir's police headquarters where this story begins. So what has happened that yesterday around 2 p.m. in a joint operation, the BSF and the Chhattisgarh police team neutralized 29 next slides. So what has happened, you can see in the in this map. Here you can see the visual. I would like to request my Vijay to pan and show you this visual. So this is a Kakir map. This is a Kakir district in which in this area that joint operation was conducted by the BSF team and the Chhattisgarh police team in which they have neutralized. 29 Naxals which include 15 women and 14 men and in that operation two Chhattisgarh police team all officials also got Jawans also got injured and one BSF Jawan also got injury into his calf muscles but right now they are recovering very well now I'm joined by Bastar IGP Sundarlal so what has happened? Could you please tell us the entire timeline, how it has started? On 16th of April, we had a specific input about presence of banned and uh, illegal moist outfit in Chota Betia uh, police, police station jurisdiction area. So there was a joint operation launched by DRG Kanker and BSF. During the search operation, around 14 hours, there was an exchange of fire and the exchange of fire continued for almost 4 to 5 hours. At the end of the uh, exchange of fire, we searched the area. We recovered more than 29 moist dead bodies. Out of the 29, 15 are female moist carriers and uh, most of them are uniform carriers. And from the spot, we recovered AK-47, SLR, INSAS 303 carbine 9M pistol, uh, over 9 dual graded weapons, which were we might have been looted from the security forces at various points of time. Yeah. How long that operation continued, sir? Exchange of fire took place for more than four to five hours, and still now, like uh, uh, other reinforcement parties, also they are searching the area. It is a continuous process. Right now, also we have a lot of teams uh, uh, who are coordinating and searching that uh, site of encounter, so that for any chance of like moist uh, injured cadres, we will be able to apprehend them. Also, the operation is going on right now. I'm just sitting in the vehicle that was carrying arms and ammunition recovered during that entire operation. So what has happened in the five hour entire operation that what we have seen that 29 next slides were killed. They were neutralized by the BSF and the Chhattisgarh police and here you can see all those arms and ammunition. So this is a gun that is uh, uh, that, 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 that has uh, kept over here. Apart, it's not just one gun or two guns. There are multiple guns that have been recovered. And apart from that, if you see, there have been other machines and there, there are some cordless objects. There's, there's a wireless phone as well over here. And apart from that, if you see different materials, uh, apart from medicine and other objects, they have been recovered from, uh, from that area when that uh, raid took place and uh, once that raid completed then uh, the entire material has been uh, kept in that car and, and brought in over here I'm joined by BSF DIG Mr. VM Balaji what was this in, in, entire operation all about uh, this entire operation was conducted on a specific end which was provided by BSF as well as uh, tech end of police also SIB and on those ends uh, we planned an operation and which was launched by 94 battalion along with DRG of uh, BS, uh, uh, of so Chhattisgarh police. So what we have seen that uh, 29 uh, duck slides were uh, neutralized in this entire case, right? Yes. So the entire operation has been completed. How successful were the uh, entire operation because uh, of the specific kind of intelligence input that you have got was it, was it the Went, uh, was it went as as the as you planned it well? Uh, it went as per the plan. Uh, it was planned very meticulously uh, by the troops, and uh, you seeing the result here. Uh, we've got 29 uh, naxalites uh, here, uh, dead bodies of naxal naxals here, and uh, most of them are top commanders. So uh, 
the, however the identification is yet going on. All right, uh, we have our uh, guests uh, on uh, this conversation, Shaina NC, to represent the BJP view. Our, our, our position is that uh, since uh, the change of government in October in Chhattisgarh, things are uh, getting more intense insofar as anti-Naxal operations are concerned. Uh, to take on that view from the opposition side is uh, Gyanendra Mishra, his political analyst. He believes perhaps that uh, this is... Uh, uh, this is uh, nothing to do with the BJP or what? Let's try to understand. Ganesh Mishra, we had a Congress spokesperson suggesting that there should be an inquiry into this encounter. What's the position? And uh, what's wrong if Naxals are being taken out like this? Uh, no, so Abhishek, thanks for having me on your show. So I, I, I would not see or make it in a political issue at all. I would be in agreement with you that yes, Naxal need to be tackled sternly uh, because the Naxals are essentially an scourge on the society. And uh, all government, I think, in their right earnest is taking steps and aggressively, uh, you know, conducting the operations against the Naxals across the nation. And the moment you try to make a point out of it that, you know, the, since now the BJP government is there and therefore there is uptick in aggression against the action against the Naxals, I think th this kind of in political statements basically makes it in a political issue, which sh it should not ought to be. I think every government, when you look at the previous government also, and mind that that uh, uh, to carry a successful operation against the Naxal, a, 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 a clear you know cooperation between the state police force and the centralized agencies are are necessary. And uh, when you look at it from that standpoint, when a government is, is a common government in a state as well as the central, the coordination between the state police and the central agencies would be, you say, is better. <laughs> and therefore, there would be a better intelligence input. And therefore, no, I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding. Your, your, your disagreement is with the BJP doing this or your disagreement is that this should not be done? Because... Because you're saying, okay, fine, we should be stern with them. But then, if the BJP is doing it, we did not see these kind of reports coming in six months uh, May prior. May I please come in? This has happened no, or so started that's happening so, so, so that's over the, the last so that's the six point. months okay. only. May Before I that, it was almost in? like a winter. No, that's, that's the point I was making. I, I'll come to you, Shaina. You just, I'm sort of uh, asking him a straight question, then I come to you. Okay, sure. Yeah, Ganesh Mishra, respond. I, I, I'll come, go to Shaina next. You have to respond. My question is that your problem is with the BJP doing it or you are saying that the BJP has not done it. It was happening earlier because it was not. No, so, that, so uh, on the contrary, what I am saying is that any action against yeah. the Naxalite should not be made a political issue in the sense or a, or, or a, or a, or a political ball point in the sense that since it but is who has BJP made it political? Who has made it political? The Congress party has no. made it political. The Home Minister has given a factual statement that 80 Naxals have been eliminated in the last few months, three months alone. 125 have been arrested, 150 have surrendered on their own because they fear that this action would happen. Shaina NC, you know, the Congress party demanding inquiry in this anti naxal operation. Again, a typical mindset of uh, questioning national security measures. You know, there are certain parties that only play appeasement politics. You know, we have a strong government. The honorable prime minister, the honorable no, home minister, kudos to this uh, uh, elimination. This is an operation where we need to applaud our border security force and the state police for coercively working proactively to eliminate 29 Maoists. I mean, I think this is something that goes way beyond the political thought process. 
This is about keeping our country safe. This girl. This is not the first time you've had this four to six hour operation by the Border Security Force and State Police. Do understand that in the past too, whether it's Odisha or whether it's Garchiroli, the Honorable Home Minister and the Home Department, I would like to applaud them for the proactiveness and the political will they have shown in countering terrorism, countering Naxals and countering the Maoists. And here you have 29 killed in a day. This is not about um, anything but political will. And that political will sends a strong message to anyone who wants to destabilize India, be it the Maoists, the Naxals or any terror outfit, that this is a government that talks tough on this issue. And the Honorable Home Minister's statement today, I think, is worth taking cognizance of because this is not just an encounter. This is the way it's going to be dealt with in the days to come. When have you heard before that 150 Maoists have surrendered themselves, surrendered themselves to the government because they realize that this is a tough government that is going to come down so hard that it's probably better to please surrender. And yes, congratulations to everyone who was part of this operation, be it the state police, the border security force, or for that matter, even the people leading this whole campaign from the Home Ministry under the guidance of Honorable Amit Shah Ji and the Prime Minister. And the Congress has the audacity to doubt and say that, you know, uh, what have they done? Please, you can show no sympathy to Naxals, Maoists or terror outfits. This is a question of India's safety, security and Bharat being the different power that we are today is not looking for a certification from the Congress party. How dare they doubt our forces? How dare they question the integrity of the coexistence of the okay. BSF and the state police? The Maoists that have been neutralized in this out. In this, uh, in this encounter, this is not the first of its China. kind. The Home Department has been successful in Gadchiroli, has been successful in Andhra and Odisha. And we know that in the days to come, this is just a trailer. China. So anybody who deems to mess with India and India's safety, security will be neutralized completely. China, you know, you say how the Congress Party dares. It's really yes, ironic sorry, and even what? stupid for the Congress Party be do, to be doing so because almost their entire Chhattisgarh leadership was eliminated in the Sukma encounter, yes. right? Gyan in the Mishra. Yes. And yes. Yes. it's the Congress Party which is politicizing. Yes. But then, yes. <coughs> but then when I say that post the coming of the BJP government, things have changed. It has traditionally been so in so far as at least Chhattisgarh is concerned. So be it the Salwa Judu in the early days of when Chhattisgarh were carved, was carved out of uh, Madhya Pradesh and the BJP came to power there. Yes. Uh, under the then government of Raman Singh, again, the Operation Green Hunt or the latest one in this present round where yes. based on an intelligence input coming in from yes. the Ministry of Home Affairs, this operation has been carried out. So Ganyan Mishra, obviously, there is politics to it. But insofar as BJP is concerned, action on Naxalites and in the case of Congress party, absolutely muddled thinking. They lost their own leaders so, in Sukma. Abhishek, may, yes, so Abhishek, my point is that I have, I have not seen any state from the Congress party which says that the Maoists should not be taken. Bring out the statement of Sudan. Sukla, a spokesperson for the Congress in Ch Chhattisgarh, and he categorically made in a statement that we will support a move by the administration to eradicate Maoism and Maoism. This is the specific statement. So, therefore, I understand from okay, where this narrative is coming. I'm having video connectivity issues with both the guests, unfortunately, and that really sort of uh, yeah. cut down Can the duration of the debate. Also, Ganan Mishra, we'll try and China and see, we'll try and have Can a better connectivity next time. I've really run out of time also because you guys joined a little late. We could have had at least five more minutes of this conversation. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on this edition of Versus uh, Short Break. The burning question is on the other side.
पता नहीं क्रिकेट का फ्यूचर कैसा होगा पर सीलिंग फैंस का फ्यूचर पता है बिकॉज इट्स ऑलरेडी हियर ओरिएंट एरोस्लिम विथ रिवर्स रोटेशन मोड जो इंप्रूव करे एयर सर्कुलेशन ओरिएंट पीएलडीसी फैन द फ्यूचर ऑफ फैंस In the Global Employability Rankings by Times Higher Education UK, only the following six institutions from India are ranked amongst the top 230 in the world for having the most employable graduates: IIT Delhi, IIS Bangalore, IIT Bombay, IIM Ahmedabad, IIT Kharagpur, and Amity University. With over 1 lakh 12,718 startups igniting innovation, driving digital growth, over 800 million internet users are bridging distances and strengthening bonds across the globe, making India the third largest digitalized country in the world, accounting for around 46% of the world's real-time digital transactions. To celebrate the makers and shakers behind Digital India. and india's phenomenal digital yatra republic business is delighted to bring its inaugural republic business emerging tech awards rahul gandhi's political adviser sam pitroda has sparked fresh controversy he says elon musk's visit to india is no big deal so elon musk will come PM will have a little show and tell with him like he had with Bill Gates. I was ashamed of that conversation. Believe me, as a technocrat, I was ashamed of that conversation. Musk and they will announce joint venture. Okay. Some more electronic cars will be or electric cars will be sold. Prime Minister will have a conversation with Musk. Okay, he will give advice to Musk and Musk will give advice to Prime Minister. Everybody will clap. What about the rickshaws? What about the poor guy who is driving a rickshaw with his pedal all his life? Okay, to me that is more important today than Elon Musk coming. Okay, because the whole world is geared towards power and profit. We only celebrate power and profit. We don't celebrate planet and people. The congressman has mocked PM Modi's candid conversation with Bill Gates. I will focus on only one guarantee and that is employment. I don't want to go beyond that. Country today needs employment. You promised 20 million new jobs every year. For 5 years 100 million jobs. How many jobs you have created? Conversation stops right there. There is no more conversation. Elon Musk coming is coming in is not a conversation. Having Bill Gates come in and invest here is not a conversation. Conversation is you promise hundred million jobs in five years. What have you done? I'm talking as a citizen. With the Lok Sabha polls just three days away, Sam Pitroda has won the voters against BJP. I think people of India will have to decide what kind of a nation they want to build going forward. If people of India decide that they want to build a nation. which is authoritarian which is polarized which is more focused on religion which is according to me a personal matter which tells you what to eat which tells you uh where to marry which tells you what religion to practice over 1 lakh 12718 startups igniting innovation driving digital growth over 800 million internet users are bridging distances and strengthening bonds across the globe 
making India the third largest digitalized country in the world, accounting for around 46% of the world's real-time digital transactions. To celebrate the makers and shakers behind Digital India and India's phenomenal digital yatra, Republic Business is delighted to bring its inaugural Republic Business Emerging Tech Awards. Good evening and welcome ladies and gentlemen. According to most of the opinion polls, the NDA is well over the 350 mark already. In fact, the Matrice opinion poll which I'm putting out tonight on behalf of Republic projects the NDA at between 375 to 390 with a median of 383. Of this, the BJP alone is presently according to the opinion poll of Matrice at 338. That is 35 more seats than in 2019. This trend, if it continues, will see the BJP plus its allies closing in on the 400 mark. So not only are they winning, they're winning really, really big this time. Now, viewers, there are cynics, there are people, there are frustrated people, there are all kinds of people. There is the YouTubers Collective, of course, which is running the campaign for the Congress party this time. And by the YouTubers Collective, I mean about 20 YouTubers. All they do, about 50% of them living outside India who make YouTube videos to support the Congress party. Like in every election this time too, this number of 400 is seen to be mathematically impossible. Not just by the YouTubers collected, but also by traditional election analysts and cephologists. They say, no, it can't happen. We'll break it up state by state, district by district. Village by village and town by town and prove to you that 400 plus or close to 400 cannot happen. But I don't agree with them because I believe elections are won by what is on the top of mind recall. What is uppermost, ladies and gentlemen, on the minds of most voters. And you can ask yourself today, what is uppermost on their mind this time? What is uppermost on the minds of most voters this time is the Modi factor, the Modi brand and the Modi guarantee. What is the mood in the country? The mood in the country is positive. And if the mood in the country is positive, then that will reflect in the numbers that the NDA gets. I personally believe that 400 or close to it is very much in the realm of possibility. And because it is possible, there is a lot of fear mongering going on about what will happen, about how catastrophic it will be if Narendra Modi becomes Prime Minister again with the support of 400 or around 400 or 400 plus, char so par. And because of all these theories doing the rounds, because the people who know they are going to lose the election are going, going around saying how terrible things will become if Narendra Modi becomes Prime Minister for the third time. And that is why it's very, very good that the Prime Minister himself absolutely clarified today with total certainty that neither does he intend to change the constitution of India nor does he intend to overturn the ideals that the country has been founded on or overturn democracy. In fact, if you listen to the Prime Minister today, and I'm so glad that he's clarified on it, he didn't need to. He didn't need to, but he's purposefully done it. And that's good because by doing so, he's brought the focus back on Vixit Bharat. What he spoke from the ramparts of the Red Fort over two years back. The promise of a developed nation. The vision of a developed nation by 2047. The YouTubers brigade who are running a false theme of democratic backsliding etc. will in my view get no traction. They are limited pockets of... संविधान निर्माताओं का सपना था कि भारत समृद्ध बने लेकिन दशकों तक देश पर राज करने वाली कांग्रेस ने मौका गवा दिया देश का समय गवा दिया 25 करोड़ देशवासियों को गरीबी से बाहर निकाला है आपके सेवक ने
कमंडिया अलायंस के पास न कोई विजन है न कोई विश्वास है आरजेडी ने भी इतने वर्षों तक बिहार पर राज किया है बिहार में जंगल राज का सबसे बड़ा चेहरा आरजेडी है बिहार में भ्रष्टाचार का दूसरा नाम आरजेडी Ladies and gentlemen, today happens uh, to be the last day of campaigning for the first phase of the polling. It is going to be, be an interesting election, keeping in mind that the first phase, if you're really looking at, this will be one of the key states, particularly Tamil Nadu. The reason essentially being the kind of push that has been made by the Prime Minister ahead of uh, the first phase. Now, if you contrast that with perhaps uh, the Indy Alliance, it's quite different. Tonight, on 8 p.m., we take you through the three top stories. One with regards to why exactly is Rahul Gandhi silent over a Meti seat? And if a question is asked, why exactly is he maintaining secrecy over the Meti seat? The second story is about how the Prime Minister is leading the fierce political campaign in different states. And finally, we will discuss how there is an unending politics over Ram Mandir. The question, however, is Ram Rajya shows the way for Raj Tilak on the 4th of June. That's the three stories. And just to give you an idea, Abhishek, it's also for our viewers to understand that these three stories also are an indication of, or one would say, a barometer of what's really happening right now in the country with regards uh, to the elections ahead of the phase one polling. Let's first take you to that story of a meeting. Now, there has been a suspense over who exactly is going to be contesting from the high-profile Amethi seat in Uttar Pradesh. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi said it was the domain of the party's Central Election Committee and he would abide by its decision. While the BJP has renominated Smriti Irani from the Amethi seat, which was once a stronghold of the Gandhis, Congress, in fact, is yet to name its nominee. Now, the speculation has been rife that Rahul Gandhi, who has been renominated by the Congress from Kerala's Wayanad, may also come contest from Amethi, but that's completely in the realm of speculation. There is also what's doing the rounds is that perhaps it could be Robert Vadra. Now, Rahul Gandhi has essentially won the Amethi seat three consecutive times since 2004. However, Smriti Irani won the seat by 55,000 votes in 2019, earning her the tag of giant slayer. The question here, ladies and gentlemen, is that why exactly is the Congress mum on the Amethi candidacy. Today, when the media asked uh, the question from Rahul, this is exactly what Rahul Gandhi had said. And then I'll also bring in our senior executive editor, Abhishek Kapoor. First, interestingly, listen into what Rahul Gandhi had to say. The moment a journalist asked him this question, why are you running away from contesting in Amethi? लोग तो गुजरात छोड़कर पीएम बनने के लिए बनारस आते हैं आप बाय नाइट चले गए तो क्या अमेठी या रायबरेली से आप लड़ेंगे ये ये बीजेपी वाला क्वेश्चन है ये पसरकार का सवाल है पहले ओपनिंग ओपनिंग बॉल ओपनिंग बॉल बीजेपी क्वेश्चन वेरी गुड शाबाश देखिए अमेठी की बात कांग्रेस का सिस्टम है जो भी मुझे ऑर्डर मिलेगा मैं वो करूंगा सीसी मीटिंग हमारे हमारी पार्टी में सीसी मीटिंग्स में ये डिसीजन लिए जाते हैं। बट पहला बीजेपी का क्वेश्चन, गुड क्वेश्चन, थैंक यू। वेल, इन फैक्ट दैट वाज राहुल गांधी मोमेंट आफ्टर ही वाज आस्ट दिस क्वेश्चन, बट इवन टिल डेट the Congress is completely silent over this, Abhishek. Just a oh, quick oh, recap. This is a BJP question, Shavan. I, I, I fail to understand that. This morning too. when Rahul Gandhi made that comment, how is this a BJP question? People of Amethi, his voters, his constituents, people who have voted for him for two or three terms, Amethi a constituency with the Gandhi family for almost four decades, 
it's a peep it's a question which people of amedi perhaps who are interested in not just the bjp yeah. or or the bjp would they be bothering who comes to contest when they have already decided their candidate strong candidate in ashmurthy irani can i just ask you a quick quick question vivinay ji before i come to you a quick question to you abhishek if you really look at the numbers particularly mm -hmm. at least the three years where rahul gandhi has represented that very seat if you see the numbers have been dwindling over a period of time yeah. was there a, a, already a clear indication back in the last elections itself that the gandhis completely failed to understand that they did not really understand the pulse of that constituency if you really look at it from the numbers perspective so i don't know whether they have stopped understanding the pulse of the constituency because the constituency has been with the gandhi family for four decades uh, but what is important is uh, shavan that uh, it seems the gandhis have don't have the stomach now to really take on smriti irani in amethi that seems to be the case rahul gandhi is not having the stomach for a fight in amethi that seems to be the case vinay ji just a quick response with regards to the perception battle because this election is also about the perception even if today rahul gandhi would have lost the elections in amethi there would have been a message that would have been sent across sonia gandhi also leaves raiburelli looks for a easier option right now well perhaps some would say that she is unwell and that that could be the reason but the perception battle has that already been lost shravan ji and abhishek ji ram ram to both of you and all my co panelists and all the viewers who are watching me right now will have to understand amethi it was formed in 1967 and in since 1967 two terms i think it was janata party and then once in 1998 it was bjp for a short while and then it is indira gandhi uh, uh, smriti ji who came in last time but if you see the family had complete control over that constituency for more than 42 years so it was uh, captain shatish sharma it was Uh, initially sanjay ji won it but unfortunately he died in that uh, plane accident then rajiv ji came in then he died uh, in that assassination so satish sharma came in then sunia ji came in and then rahul ji was there so 42 years but what the people of amethi has seen or what the entire country has seen this in this 42 years the number of visit of gandhi family or representative of gandhi so many times you may not go because uh, you have a larger role to play so you may send your uh, team which is capable and to do deliver but the number of visit they did compared to in the last 5 years the presence of the local mp the minister even while she had various roles to play but she was there a number 2 is the entire infrastructure which was there in amethi so if you see it is a two different thing 2018 if you see and now you see it it's a two different uh, city all together the health infrastructure uh, the opportunities for education it is changed so if you see there the common voter has tested now the governance the yeah. common voter has tested the development part there now they are no more excited with the name of the dynasty okay they will not be excited with any names even with smithy's name if had this demo, uh, this delivery of governance not been done so what has happened in the last 10 years in the entire country in the last 5 years particularly in this constituency of amethi is the test of delivery uh, the test of democracy the test of development uh, be it be right. delivery of toilets yeah. or be it be the delivery of the health services which are there but well, i think apart from this there is one more thing which people may shy out and i will take the liberty to say is the palace feud which is going on within the family True. Uh, whether it is mr wadra who right. had shown his interest to contest there whether the sister wants to this thing and there is also a pressure on rahul gandhi to go back to amethi the tw twist in the tail perhaps savio comes in with uh, the surprise uh, statement that was made by robert wadra now he says that look here people of amethi really want me to be there so i i believe the twist in the story has yet to really come in because it seems like this is almost like uh, being made in a manner that you would make that grand announcement of robert wadra to make his entry into political you know political life that's the only reason why perhaps they would have been so very silent on this entire matter you see unfortunately for the congress and which is very unfortunately for politics at large in india over a long period of time is that they cannot groom the congress cannot group another leader other than somebody from the family to look after the amity constituency in fact one of the saddest parts in in rahul's entire political career in my opinion not as somebody who supports the bjp but as a as a citizen of this country and as as a senior journalist is that when the competition was high at amity with smriti irani coming in then a true leader 
would actually take on the mantle of leading the Congress ship with fighting the battle and controlling his own court. But he didn't do that. He went away to Wayanad. Now, I have told many of the Congress people that I know that Rahul Gandhi primarily is a politician who's sitting on a rocking chair. The chair is certainly in motion, but he's not going anywhere. He's not getting anywhere and the Congress is not getting anywhere. So the motion of the rocking chair continues. But Congress is not going to go anywhere. They're going to come extremely bad in 2024 as far as the Lok Sabha election is concerned. Now, why, why does amity also become important? And I think it's very cowardly of Rahul Gandhi. And I say it with utmost responsibility because I think Rahul Gandhi is showing the Congress that I have left my fort and I've gone into a more easier bastion to win. But I cannot fight Smriti Irani, who represents women power from the BJP and women power of exactly what right. India stands for. So he's run away from competing with the Nadi Shakti in Amiti. And that is really sad okay. because he should have stood up as a leader and fought and shown the Congress leadership that I can control, continue to hold my fort. The fort of the Congress, the fort of the Gandhi is what he walked away. Do you think that the country is going to repose faith in this man who walked away from his own constituency to a safe right. seat? I don't think so. Geeta, the Congress has basically countered this by simply saying that, look here, it's the prerogative of the party to basically choose which constituency they would like to contest from, which has happened even for the Bharatiya right. Janata Party. They also have gone a step further by saying that, look here, the Prime Minister has also changed his constituency. He's gone to Uttar Pradesh to really contest from uh, for, for the Lok Sabha election. So, where is the problem here? Well, Chavanji, thanks for having me on your show. And uh, uh, you see, uh, the way Mr. Rahul Gandhi responded in the press conference, uh, it is not surprising because any uncomfortable question which comes his way, we have noticed that, you know, it is always, his response is always trying to uh, portray that as if the, any reporter who's asking a question which is uncomfortable, that it is from the BJP. I think, you know, that also reflects upon his uh, maturity in handling any kind of question that is asked to him. Nevertheless, if we look at his candidature from Amethi, it is interesting to note that we, the Wayanad uh, seat is, is going for poll on 26th of April. Now, now, it would be interesting to note here that he is dodging this question. Is it that he is, there could be two uh, ways. One is that definitely he is trying to avoid and they are not going to, the seat is not going to put his name for the Amethi seat. Or the other option right. could be that they do not want to spoil any because that seat, why not seat itself is not so easy for him this time. Uh, considering that Mr. D. Raja's wife is contesting the seat and it is going to be a tough contest for him. <coughs> and the way that he has, uh, you know, his uh, representation as a parliamentarian from that constituency, the people as the reports are coming are not very satisfied with him. Right. And second aspect that uh, I would like to put forth is, and this is well, related in to fact, the question on, yes, please, on Ram Rajya that, you know, the third part which you fact, were, uh, you fact, were Geeta... putting up in terms of, yes, can I complete? Just give me 10 seconds, please. We'll come I, to that. You see, the, the Congress yeah. party in 2019, out of 52 seats, 15 seats, it had one from Kerala. And the uh, uh, then one reason for which Congress, uh, you know, Congress leaders, Ms. Sonia Gandhi, took so much time to respond to whether to go for the Pran Pratishta of Bhagwan Ram on 22nd of January. Okay. They took a very long time to respond. Was uh, we'll because... come to that, Gita. We'll come to yeah. that because that's also another... Gita, we'll, we'll come to that Pran Pratishta aspect also because that uh, is exactly what the Prime Minister also spoke about just uh, earlier in the day. Yes. But... You know, a quick recap, Abhishek, of uh, in the run-up to the phase one polls, what we have essentially seen, the Prime Minister had sounded the poll bugle much earlier than the, what the opposition leaders had to say. Secondly, as just an, a voter, I would look at two candidates or, or two, two alliances here. What is it that each of these alliances have to really offer? In fact, what we see right now, ahead of the phase one of 
of the polls, it's the Prime Minister who has clearly said that if I come back, this is what I am going to give you. Contrast that with the India Alliance, we are yet to understand what is it that they are going to offer. So they will give an X-ray and MRI, they will uh, give a caste census, uh, they will uh, give a private sector reservation uh, that Rahul Gandhi has been talking about, uh, they will remove the CAA. Uh, there would be no question whatsoever but of they, are not in, they, they are will not give in, up nuclear weapons for God's sake. They will give up nuclear weapons. They will say, oh, chai, let China have it. Let Pakistan have it. Let's become Mother Teresa. Let's become Mahatma Gandhi. Let's become Gautam Buddha. That, that's what the opposition is promising. And they, they have said that uh, in their manifesto. So it's for the people to choose, but obviously. What I'm not understanding is this. You have a Khichri alliance right now. Everyone has a different understanding. A classic example of what's really happening in the state of Kerala where you have the left and the Congress really fighting each other. Yeah. Simply saying that, look, this is our domain. We are going to constantly fight against each other. But it's going to be very different nationally. Now, for instance, in the CAA, what has essentially happened, ladies and gentlemen, if you really look at the manifesto of the, each of these political parties, they have a different view on it. Congress seems to be completely mum on it. Yeah. Congress is mum because they understand the implications and they, 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 they seem to be confused. So, for example, Mamata Banerjee takes some position on Ram Navmi right. but asks her leaders uh, to carry out or be part of Ram Navmi processions and uh, festivities uh, and even uh, uh, shout Jai, cha, chant Jai Shri, Shri, Jai Shri Ram. So, the opposition has been muddled in its thinking. Look at what they have done today, Shavan. I mean, it has to be told. Uh, Sukma encounter, the entire Congress leadership was eliminated in yes. Chhattisgarh, right? And today yes. the Congress party is asking for an inquiry in the encounter that has taken place in which uh, 29 Naxals have been eliminated. Well, in fact, it, it becomes very clear, Vinidji, that from the campaigning that has actually taken place, Avi, I'll also come to you, you know, from the campaigning it is very clear that the Prime Minister is <coughs> face. It is the Modi factor which is still working. But I, this is the question that many would be asking even to the BJP leaders here right now, Vinidji, that is it not about the contributions that each of these parliamentarians have made or it does, does not really matter? In today's election in India, it does not matter which candidate is really standing because it is, it is about only about Prime Minister Modi. No, let me correct you. Uh, every candidate matters. Every character matters because... Ultimately, the leadership represents the collective characteristics, collective strength of those people who have been elected. And so, Modi ji, of course, represents that. But what drives the country or what drives the party or what drives the initiative is the leader himself. Right. So, it is two things. One, the leader gets strength from his elected member of parliaments, but the country sees the light only when the leadership is right. I will give you two examples which will probably tell you why I like this particular dispensation. Well, I am not going to talk about 10 crore toilets, I am not going to talk about the 10 crore uh, gas which has helped the women uh, come out of the pain. But you know, uh, there was a report called as HK Khan report which talked about uh, banking access to uh, the citizens and uh, it was in way back in 2006. Now, 2006 to 2014, the great economist was there as a prime minister, but he never thought about this particular part. That what will the difference be when a woman gets an access to banking? So, we all know that when central government is to send the money, the money was distributed through the channels, talatis, revenue officers. And when a revenue officer is to see a beneficiary, especially a woman, a woman from Dalit community, we knew that many times there was comments been passed. The girls, the women, the sisters were facing challenges not only of rapes, molestation, but also taunts. If not, and we were fortunate to have a good officer who did not do this, and we have many good officers, majority of them are good officers, that they would not comment, they would not do this, and they would sincerely pass that benefit to that girl, child or girl. But yet the girl was shy to collect that. But now here, one simple initiative won by the Prime Minister, Jandan Yojana, where a banking access was given to this girl. There was another initiative called as DBT, direct benefit transfer. So the girl does not, the woman does not have to go and meet any officer, good officer or bad officer. There is a button being pressed at the central level and she gets the benefit. Now here, the chances of she being tormented, raped, victimized, even been, you know, right. feeling shy was limited. And that empowerment, you can assume, you know, you, can, you cannot imagine sitting here in the air-conditioned room that what she would have got. So that is the biggest change which I think the leadership does when the leadership is in the right position. If you permit me one more example I will give you. We come from a Hindu background, a Sanatan background where the mothers are taught to sacrifice for their father, their husband, their son. So when there was illness in the house, the women were the most sufferer. She would think that if she told her house, where will she go from So she suffered. The Janoshodi thing, 
where you can get economical remedies for the health crisis was introduced and the jandhan the ayushman yojana where now the women knows that my family will not pay but i will yet get these services so many of these women who were suffering the health crisis because these two things were not provided were provided so when a leadership has that kind of micro attention uh, to a macro problem then you know that he is actually okay. bringing the ram rajya ram rajya means what not that a ram idol will be established in your house or my house know that we will give get leaves on ram uh, nomi it is about that my sister my daughter my mother will not face the pain of facing some officer while getting the benefits she will be able to relieve herself inside the house in a toilet she will be able to get the medicines sitting in the house she will not have to go to the jungle face goons there face snakes women and other things there when she gets that peace she said ram rajya aa gaya yeah okay but savio if i can you know quickly bring you in the argument that has been put forth right now is uh, abhishek uh, also that this is not really good for democracy because you're essentially making it a completely presidential kind of an elections that is the reason why you would have just one face and the others are saying that it does not really matter whether at all it throws up new fresh leaders all together so that's the I other wonder, argument that I has I been I wonder what is not presidential when for 17 years pandit jawalal nehru was prime minister was it not presidential for 13 years when indira gandhi was the prime minister so i mean if you have a charismatic leader obviously you campaign with that leader if the bjp now has a charismatic leader in the form of narendra modi or for 7 years had in the form of atal bihari vajpayee obviously they would go with that leader if rahul gandhi is the face of the congress party or or their most charismatic leader obviously they would go with rahul gandhi who's complaining nobody is saying that you should have made ranjit surjewala or malikarjun kharge the face of the uh, uh, of the congress campaign it's rahul gandhi because he's the most camp- charismatic and uh, popular leader of the congress party i'm only wondering if savio is uh, smiling because you have given him the answer already savio you don't have to add much or you would like to add something because he's already given you the answer savio can't disagree that rahul gandhi is the most popular leader of the congress party i don't think so, i don't think a single I bjp think. leader would ever want rahul gandhi to go outside yeah. the country because they would want him to be there always because it it makes their life much more simpler go ahead savio go ahead well keeping aside the charisma of prime minister modi which is a very important aspect of the uh, the leadership that is driving india over the last 10 years and will continue to drive india what is happening really is the impression and the impact that the last 10 years of various different exercises have that have happened that has impacted now let me tell you you know indulge me in a little for a little while So we started to write a book, Amit Bagaria and myself, and we looked at 108 reasons why we would vote for Modi. Now we started this way back in December, right? And we told our publisher that we were going to do 40,000 words, and he said, "Great, we'll do it in about a month, and we will send it." And that's the kind of speed we work on. And then we started to get deep into, dig into it, pull in data, set out a team to do the research, the analysis, bring it all together. when we submitted the book yesterday finally to the publisher out of the 108 reasons i can tell you in the last 